So to summarize what we did is we edited single dash staff to simply pull in the template part for rendering a staff member. On archive, it looped through and it rendered them all. On single, it just goes to get the one. So then in loop dash staff, on the part that we only wanted to show for a single person, we checked with if is singular. Is anybody not familiar with how the exclamation point works in PHP? You're not. All right. Exclamation point is called a bang, and it means not. So if I just put in an exclamation point, just like that, now my content is going to show on every page that is not a single staff member. Does that make sense? That is the standard way to say not in PHP but you use it on all conditional statements when you want the opposite of what it says. So there's a function that says is page, which checks to see if you're on a page. Well, you can put an exclamation point in front of it and it'll say if this is not a page. Make sense? Great. There we have our archive page and our single. Now, if we want to reorganize some of this so that it renders a different way, there's a function called query posts. There are two different ways to ask the database for post stuff. One is query posts, which is a function, and the other is wp underscore query, which is a class. And it says right here on this page which one you should use and when. It says here, use query posts to display different posts than would normally show up at a specific URL. Caveats, query posts is only one way amongst many to query the database. It alters the main loop. Query post is meant for altering the main loop. It does so by replacing the query used to generate the main loop content. So WP query, which is a class, is what you would use to, to just create a whole new request and say, I want that stuff. Query post is what you would use to say, I already have a query running. I just want to change it a little bit. I want, it to, make, I want to make it do something else. So down here, uh, let's see, let's go down a little bit more. Preserving existing query parameters. So there's a global variable called query string. You want to make sure you have it, so you say global query string. Then you run query posts, and you put in the original query string, and you append it with this dot to whatever it is you want to change. So in this case, they're changing the order to be ascending, because by default it's descending. You want to combine parameters, it's very similar to a get variable in your URL. You just put an ampersand between them. So in this one, they changed the page to say, only get me posts from category number three posted in the year 2004. And as you can see, they can get progressively complex. There's a link here to the parameter section of the WP Query class article, and that shows you everything you can ask for. And it's very, very long. You can get extraordinarily precise about what you want to be doing in this. There's the authors. Well, you know what? Let me go to the top, and it'll say here, parameters, author parameters, categories, tags, taxonomies, searches, post and page, type, status, pagination, so you can say, you know, how many on a page you want, order and order by, and all that stuff. So we're going to mess with pagination a little bit. And here are your pagination options. There's no paging, which says, give me all the posts. I don't want to do just 10 per page and have next and previous and all that jazz. There's posts per page. So you can say, I want three, seven, nine, whatever. Posts per archive page, very similar, but on an archive page. There's an offset to say, don't give me the first two. Start at number three and just move on from there. 
and then paged, number of page. So you can say, yeah, go ahead, I want, I want 10 per page, but I want to start on page 4. There's still a previous button, and they can go back and see them, but I, I just want to start on page 4 because I'm weird. For our staff page, we actually want to see all of them. By default, we're not seeing all of them. I happen to be seeing all because I only have three. But if you go into your settings, and you go into reading, there's an option to say blog pages show at most 10 posts. I'm just going to make mine say two real quick. I'll reload my staff archive page, and I'll bet I'm only going to see old Louie and Neil there. Sure enough, and look, there's an older posts link. I don't want that. I want to see all of them, no matter how many there are, forever. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, I want the example. I want this example because I want to keep all the original query stuff. This is in the section called Preserving Existing Query Parameters, and there's a link for that in the contents at the top. So to reiterate, I'm, yeah, I'm in the codex on the Query Posts page under the Preserving Existing Query Parameters. So I'm just going to copy that whole chunk and paste it into my code, and then I'll tweak it accordingly. I'm going to put it into archive-staff. There we go. So, global query string. Let's just make sure that I actually have query string. I'm not caring about order ascending. Go back to the parameters page. This parameters page is one that I go to very, very often. I don't remember all the parameters, and I never will. And what I'm going to want is no paging. Default value is false to use paging, so we want to set it to true. There we go. Equals true. It's actually appending to dollar query string, which is full of who knows what. Now, I'm not entirely sure this is going to work, so we're going to reload and see. And there's Judy. It did work. So just those two lines changes the default query for this archive page. And you can get crazy. You could make this say, I don't want staff. I want departments. And bam, you have departments all over your staff page. You're entirely capable of completely changing what gets rendered on this page. Just for fun, I'm going to print our query string and see what was in there before. So the only thing that was in there is post type equals staff, which just says go get the staff. I'm going to get a little fancy here. So I'm going to say new query string string equals all this stuff. And down in this function, I'm just going to say new query string. There. I do this a lot, and it's actually pretty common in WordPress coding standards. You set up all your variables and all that kind of stuff ahead of time, and then all you really feed into the function is the one, the one variable. There you are. 
So what we had originally was post type staff. Now we have post staff, post type staff, and no paging equals true. On many, many, many occasions, I have found it valuable to print out what it is you're asking for so that you know and you can look at it and go, oh, that's not what I wanted to ask for at all. And print R is a wonderful way to do that. So I'm actually just going to rip all this back out right now because I don't need it anymore. So what we ended up with is globalizing query string, making a new query string by attaching the little bit we wanted and feeding it back into query posts. Let me talk a little bit about formatting and concatenation. We can do this sort of thing too. Oh. This does exactly what I had before. The dot equals means append to this variable, don't reassign it. This would allow you to make 30 lines of stuff vertically and break it up very nicely so you can say, oh, this line does the paging, this line does changing the post type, this line does taxonomies, whatever. So you could do this kind of thing, just keep adding on forever. That's much nicer for organization. Our original line is fine because it's short, it's easy to read. We could go on for hours manipulating this page. We're not because we just don't have that much, that many hours. This, this WP query page is going to be your friend for a long time if you do this, even if, like, even if you're using the get posts because the parameters are the same for both of them. I would recommend, if you have the time and you're as nerdy as I am, just read all of section 5 here. Once you get through the first couple, it starts to, to make sense and you can just go, oh yeah, I understand. So for example, there's the author. You can specify an author by ID or name or a collection of authors by numbers. You get down to categories, it's the same thing. By name, by ID, you can say and or in or not in. Tags by ID, and in, not in, by slug. Go down to taxonomies. Taxonomies are interesting. There's, uh, there's a whole new array of stuff you can do. I mean, you, do, you run what's called a tax query right inside the array for your normal stuff. And uh, you say what taxonomy it is. Oh, it's people. And I want to search by slug. And I want all the slugs, or I want all the terms, oh, I'm sorry, I want all the stuff that has the term Bob, the slug Bob in this taxonomy. Um, that can get a little twisty. I've spent some, some time where I go for a couple hours going, okay, do I want this? Do I want that? Do I want name? Do I want slug? Do I want ID? Um, because you can do this and you can say, I right, have multiple taxonomy things with a relationship between those taxonomies and stuff. It just, it goes on and on. Um, I've only needed to do this once or twice ever, and it's a good exercise to work through it. Um, there's the searches, the posts and pages. Um, there's one that's important that I want to show you. There's post type, which is always going to be important. Status. The various statuses for posts are publish, pending, draft, auto draft, future, private, inherit, trash, and any. If you don't specify in your query, you're going to get all of them. And if that includes the ones in the trash, that includes the ones that are in draft mode, that includes the ones with a future date that you aren't supposed to be on the website yet. And so the safest thing to do is always include a post status publish. Because then you're going to get the ones that were intended by the original author to be on the website. By default, publish is already there. So if you're on an archive page, you're good. No, there is not. There are some plugins to add one. And what they actually do is reset the status. So what about, what about um... 
No. Oh well, I mean every every post has a date. <laughs> yep. Ah, if you put in a custom content type that's using that plugin, which can create an expiration date. And actually, there are several ways to do this. The plugins, most commonly, will run the Akron and say, go get all the posts that have a date that's supposed to be expired and set them as draft. Alternatively, in your custom content type, you could just create a field called expiration and throw a date in there. And on your query, say, look at this field. If the date is older than now, don't show it. Right. So there are, there are a number of ways to get it done. There isn't, I, I wish there were, there is not built into WordPress an expiration field where you can just say, don't get any posts expired. That would be really great. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's open source, feel free to contribute. <laughs> it's funny, I had forgotten about the future one. For my church, I have on the homepage uh, the one most recent sermon and the next one coming up. So you can say next week, so-and-so is going to be preaching about such and such. And what I did is invert the date query. I said only get future ones instead of only getting past ones and limit by one. And it just got me the one next one. What I could have said was set status to future and get one. All right, we could do the same sorts of things with departments, but we're not going to because it's exactly the same. Make an archive page, tweak the loop, blah, blah, blah. That's excellent homework. Give it a shot tonight or sometime and just see if you can do the same thing with departments that we did with staff.